Good morning, everybody. We are here. This is Jibo. We are here with this uh, Honda CB500X where we have to replace the final driving chain. The model year is from uh, 2016. The chain movement, total movement, it's too much. It overcomes two inches and uh, uh, the drive, it's at uh, the end of the stroke and the rear wheel. So uh, a replacement is needed. So let's start uh, as usual with our work breakdown structure and uh, uh, this is a brainstorming uh, about what we are thinking to do for this uh, maintenance action. So uh, if tightening uh, is uh, too much, so if we can tie it and uh, it's holding uh, it's total movement, it's okay, but if the bike is not holding this total movement, it's needed a replace. So, uh, I remembered it was a 525 with 70 elements, which could be a big mistake, but uh, we, will, uh, we will find out later. So, then we have to disassembly the uh, chain will, uh, by cutting or using a tool. Then insert the new one and lock the joint. This is a, a not, uh, not a spring joint, it's a, a riveted one, so we have to use a tool. And then we have to tune what we call here stroke. Okay, now are going to study. So first mistake, it's uh, total movement, is the name, not stroke, and uh, then the uh, total movement has to be one inch instead of uh, two inches. And uh, at the shop they told me there are 112 elements, not 70, then uh, we are uh, uh, choosing to cut with a, a grinder, the whole one, but before we have to loosen the wheel and slacken off the chain. Uh, Think with, that we have to do when the bike is on is side, side stand. And then we have to insert the new, we will use a tool for lock the joint. So this is the tool we are going to use for locking the joint. And uh, this is the tool we could have used for uh, <clears throat> disassembly the uh, the chain, but it's very tricky to use and uh, since we don't need uh, any longer the old chain, we can cut it with a grinder and it, it, uh, it is uh, uh, a quicker operation. So, let's go to have a look of the chain. This is the new one and uh, here is uh, the fake joint, uh, which we use uh, instead of uh, the spring joint, uh, which can use for the off-road bikes, uh, low-speed bikes, but not for this kind of bike, which is a tourer bike, uh, overcoming 140 km per hour. Uh, it's a 520, not 525, and uh, uh, we are going to count the joints of uh, the current uh, chain which is mounted on the bike. We're gonna put this in the, uh, the, the chain to count the joints. We have uh, loosened the wheel, now we are counting the joints starting from uh, the one which is uh, assigned with uh, the tool. So there are 56 joints, which means that 112 it's double because uh, uh, they count uh, in both sides, uh, the external and the, uh, and the inner one. Okay, let's start counting uh, the first one, which is the fake, then uh, this is the second. We count marking every 10, and then we have uh, 10, 20, etc. until we get 
this one which is the wire so the 56th is this one including the fake one and uh, we put the wire in the first we have to cut now we use this grinder but uh, we have not to cut actually the chain because uh, otherwise we should force the rivets outside what is better is to buff the rivets like this going tangent now we try with the screwdriver making a leverage to extract the joint so finally we decided to use the tool because uh, it was not possible to extract the pin from the joint using the hammer so the pin is forced to the joint And now it is free. So again, we can count the joints and uh, they are okay. They are 56, so we can go to cut the chain on the motorbike. To cut the old chain, we don't need to use the, the tool because uh, we are no, no longer going to use it, so we can just use the grinder. After the cut, we do not remove the chain because we can use it to drive the new one into <coughs> the alignment of the two sprockets in, the, in order to not to remove uh, all the covers here in the, in the engine and save time. To do this job, we have to <coughs> fit the joint in the rear sprocket because we have to grind it with the grinder in order to remove the pin, which is a thing we could have done easier without cutting the chain. So that was a mistake. By grinding <coughs> deeper than with the, the new chain, we can also extract the pin without using the tool. So now it's easier to get in touch the two chains, the hold new, the hold and the new one, and drive the new one inside his seat tools we have been using until now so our screwdriver the the key for the real wheel key 12 key 14 for uh, losing the wheel the grinder to cut the chain the tool for disassembly the pin from the chain and the tool of 14 millimeters to drive it and of course we used the owner manual of the bike. Now we are going to this, which is uh, the fake joint of the new chain to uh, connect the hold and the new one. As far as we know, there is not a right or a left side of the chain, so we connect here and uh, we start guiding the new chain here we are so now we are going to use this tool for the assembly of uh, the fake joint 
and uh, the assembly is explained in this drawing. So now we have here the internal tool. Then we put the inner joint, inner part of the joint, the O-rings with the lubricant, which is a special one provided with the chain in this uh, small package with the O-rings also. And uh, then we joint the two parts, the two free hands of the new chain, the external O-rings, the plate, the centering guides here, then the external tool, the centering take joint and the, the closing screws. So now we put the lubricant in the fake joint, the O-rings. Now we have to unload the bike from uh, its central buster because we had to loosen more the rear wheel uh, to let the new chain get in touch on the two ends. So this was a mistake because we had uh, been wasting time because we have to load it again in the central buster. So now we could join the two free ends because uh, the wheel now it's in the starting position in the former. It was very backwards, now it's very forward, so we can start closing the fake joint. Firstly, we have to seat the remaining O-rings and uh, using the lubricant, close the external plate. We got it. The lubricant is uh, also a kind of glue holding the O-rings while you mount uh, uh, them and uh, uh, ensuring they don't uh, escape the, their seats. And now we have to put the external plate. Okay, the external plate cannot get into the pins because uh, we have to force them. So first operation is to force this plate using the tool. The tool has many parts. So the problem is uh, we cannot hold the two centering plates because we have to deal with uh, the chain. So what we can try firstly is uh, to mount the bottom screw and mount the centering plate from uh, above. So this way we can use gravity to put from uh, the top the second centering plate because uh, the tool now is uh, stable because there are uh, kind of guides coping the pins of uh, the joints. So, we're gonna try to put this from the top, here. And now, we have to insert the screw through internal, external tool and the medium plate. Now we are kind of centered, but we need the fake joint for centering, which is this. So we're gonna put it into the seat, which is this, holding the two tips of the three pins. Now we can close by screwing the two screws here to start closing the external plate over the pins. After the first turns we can remove uh, the centering joint and uh, go on 
previewing in an alternative way the two closing screws this seems to be screwed till the end so now we unload and we check if the plate is uh, at the same level of the tip of the pin okay very good we went better than we thought so the tips of the pins are outside we should we should go a little bit more because uh, the external part is a kind of uh, one millimeter uh, otherwise we can go on with the revetting operation what we can do is to measure the the tip outside the fake joints in the old chain provided that this is a, a replaced one but we couldn't find any old joints so it means that this is the uh, the chain mounted on the new bike uh, where the pins are revetted in a, uh, another way than uh, than in the aftermarket ones so we have to suppose that the uh, the tip we have outside the external plate is uh, enough because we went uh, until the hand with the screws so again we mounted the tool without uh, tightening so much the closing screws of the tool and now we are going to put in the uh, riveting screw which is a special wheel, uh, special screw this one we insert it in the the two holes right first and we go till the end we expect the toric surface of the tip of the pin uh, have a uniform string which is the normal thing normal thing while riveting a pin about which this is uh, the description so it's good to have a uniform strength circular strength not this way not this way this is broken and this is not uniform so we have to head for this kind of strength And this is the detail of uh, the joint. As you can see, the strand is uniform and it's a toric surface. Now it's time to adjust because the total movement is too much. So we have to adjust by screwing the final regulation on uh, the axle of the rear wheel. Total movement has to be 1.25 inches uh, from 1 to 1.5, it's okay. So we can measure it by just watching that our thumb. And uh, take care because uh, of the centering issue. So we have to measure the outside screw of uh, the two regulators. They have to be at the same length more or less then we have to go here to measure the signs of the tightening so first level of approximation could be done by measuring the out screw so we have to tighten more in the right side now the final adjustment has to be done 
with a side stand because uh, the total movement of the chain has to be measured with the, the loads of both the wheels on the ground. Okay, now this is okay, so that there is not a, good, a big variation, but it's better to do this way. Now we are going to tighten here the screws and we are done. Here we have all the tools we used, starting from the gloves, rubber hammer, caliber, the 24 mm ski, 19 for the rear axle, a screwdriver to handle the chain, grinder, the tool for uh, releasing and uh, extracting the pin from the chain, the, both the hold and the new, uh, the key of 14 for uh, this tool and then uh, Holland key 8 tool for closing and riveting the centering tool the riveting tool with the, the Holland key of 6 and then uh, for uh, tuning and uh, uh, tightening the chain the two keys 12 and 14 so here we are at the experience section, <clears throat> speaking of which we will use the blue color. So <clears throat> firstly, uh, it's a 5.20 chain and uh, the 112 elements are calculated by counting the joints and multiplying it uh, times 2. So. Then for the disassembly, we understood we have uh, not only to cut but also to use uh, the extracting tool. And uh, afterwards, we have to count the joints in the, the whole chain. But one very important thing is to loosen the wheel at the maximum level while we start the job because uh, <clears throat> the new chain is. Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, a lot more shorter than the whole one, so while we replace it, the, the rear axle is very uh, backwards. So we have to um, prepare it for the new chain, which is shorter. And then we have to drive the hold uh, chain with the new links in order to avoid the unmounting of the cover of uh, the uh, front sprocket and uh, all the uh, driving uh, uh, chain slider. And then an important thing of the tool, uh, the locking tool for uh, uh, the fake joint is the centering because uh, we have to center the pins and then lock by uh, riveting the, uh, the pins. Uh, finally, we have to align uh, the two sprockets uh, with a balance of uh, the uh, adjustment on uh, the regulation on the rear axle. Okay, this is done. Uh, from Givo, this is all. I like to, to do this very much and I hope you too. See you, bye!